Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's second video, that's going to take us to around the 13th of January. And we'll be able to extend up beyond that with the extended GFS and e ensembles running to you around a couple of weeks. Hello, we're going to set 2 for February for the first time at the end of the video. JMA Friday has been released. That is the month ahead look at with the Japanese and CFSB2 Mars. It takes us pretty much to the end of January, uh, really. So have a look at uh, what's going on there. Lots of high pressure signals um, for this January. So, of course, there will be rain at times. It's the middle of winter, so it won't be completely dry. But it does look as though we are in for a significantly drier month than we've had. Um, really since September, uh, so we have had a very uh, wet sort of um, period from September through to December. It looks like January should be a little bit drier based on uh, the JMA and CFSV2, but have a look at that video uh, when you've done with this one. I'll talk you through what's happening at the weekend. Um, at the end of the video, things really starting to crank up now at Gazov is uh, having a bit of a rest through December and over Christmas. So uh, I'll tell you what's coming up at uh, the weekend or over weekend at the end of the video. We're going to start off, though, by having a look at uh, what's happening in the stratosphere over the North Pole. Um, so we're at MetroCL.fr. Uh, this is the stratospheric temperature forecast for the next couple of weeks from the GF at Metro Seal. So we've got these blue and purple colours here over the uh, Arctic and over the North Pole. That's where we've got the cold temperatures at 10 HPA in the stratosphere, which is one of the warmest levels of uh, the atmosphere, one of the highest levels, I should say, of the atmosphere um, in the stratosphere. Where we've got these yellow and green colours around Siberia, that's where we've got a little bit of a warming taking place in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. Uh, over Siberia. It's quite modest, but there is a bit of a warming taking place at the moment in the stratosphere over, uh, over Siberia. Let's see what GFS is forecasting to happen over the next couple of weeks. So that warming intensifies over Siberia a little bit more in the next few days. Uh, we go up to uh, sort of almost to the orange colours anyway on the temperature scale. However, over the Arctic and the pole itself, we keep these blue colours going, so the temperature stays cold at 10 HPA over the Arctic itself. That warming intensifies a little bit more as we get through to around the 8th of January. We are almost going towards red colours then over Siberia, but still very much penned in over Siberia, not able to push into uh, the Arctic and into the North Pole uh, itself. Eventually, that uh, warming starts to move, weakens a little bit, but starts to move towards Canada. So it moves from Siberia towards Canada. But all the time, we keep these blue colours continuing um, over the Arctic and over the North Pole, especially on our side of the Arctic, on the Greenland and Scandinavian side of uh, the Arctic. Very cold there with those purple colours at 10 HPA. In a more extended range, uh, this warming of the stratosphere weakens further over Canada, tries to get to Greenland, but sort of fizzles out. And uh, we finish up looking like that. So um, it never gets into the Arctic and the North Pole, that warming is restricted to Siberia and uh, and Canada, it tries to get into Greenland, but sort of fizzles out as it does so. That's as far as we can go uh, with the GFS at the moment to the 19th of January. And at that point, we still have very cold temperatures over the Arctic and over the North Pole. So certainly, uh, certainly no sign of, uh, of these cold temperatures at 10 HPA which is kind of like the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. There's no sign of that going away uh, in the next um, week or two, the next couple of weeks. That looks like it's going to continue with those very cold temperatures continuing to drive the polar vortex and um, drive the westerly. So for the time being, uh, the wait for a sudden stratospheric warming for this winter continues. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks are at Cardiff uh, in Wales today. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Cardiff. And you can see at the moment we are, we are actually a little bit cooler today. But from tomorrow onwards, the temperatures are on their way up, trending up, was becoming exceptionally mild with those upper air temperatures through the middle part of next week, Tuesday to Wednesday. Could well see uh, upper air temperatures reaching 10 degrees at. Uh, 
uh, t um, uh, at 850 HPA. Uh, and also, uh, down on the surface, we may want to see temperatures into the mid-teens Celsius, 13, 14, wouldn't necessarily rule out 15 degrees through the middle part of next week. will be positively balmy. After that, second half of next week, sees the temperatures gradually dropping. So by the time you get into the second week of uh, January, the upper air temperatures are actually getting back closer to average and then through the rest of the second week of January and into the middle part of the month and indeed into the second half of the month we generally keep the temperatures around or close to average a little bit above perhaps there are some cold outlier members in there as there always are but the overall trend appears to be relatively mild at least up to the middle of January that's the 15th of January just there um, so up to that point, it looks like generally quite mild with the chance of some exceptionally mild weather through the course of next week. Precipitation wise, again, we are in a drier spell for the next few days. So Cardiff should be completely dry now through to the middle of next week. And then gradually it starts to turn wetter later next week and into the sort of second week of January and up to middle of the month, it does look as though it turns more unsettled then. So gradually becoming wetter, perhaps, as we're moving towards the middle of January. Uh, but still generally, I would have thought, on the milder side. Temperature anomalies from the 3rd to the 11th of January are above average. It's going to be a mild and average week coming up for the UK for iron. In fact, for virtually the whole of Europe, you have to say, we have got parts of Greece and Turkey looking a little bit colder. And Portugal as well looks a little bit cool there. But otherwise, it's a very mild week coming up. Uh, exceptionally mild across Scandinavia with temperature anomalies there around 8 to 10 degrees above average. You'll notice so Iceland looking very, very cold. So we don't have to go all that far north to find cold conditions and of course and that's what you expect in this zonal pattern we find that the cold air is locked in over Iceland and uh, further north to Greenland and then back into the uh, into the Canadian Arctic in particular, that's where the cold air is locked in by this strong polar vortex which leaves the mild conditions through the mid latitudes. Temporary precipitation anomalies from the 3rd to the 11th of January look like that. So very significant, wet and average to our north. A lot of that's going to be snow, of course. Iceland will be absolutely buried in snow in the week ahead. Uh, for us, though, in the UK, so northwestern parts got a little bit wet and average. Otherwise, really, it's on the drier than average side with precipitation anomaly in the week ahead. Most parts of uh, Europe, particularly south, uh, southwestern and southern Europe, are also looking very dry indeed. So that's how uh, the GFS is looking for Monday. So we've got high pressure then centred across central parts of Europe, low pressure out to the northwest. We're dragging in means west southwest winds, classic zonal sort of pattern, wettest and windiest in the north and west, driest in the south, mild for all. Into Tuesday, well, then we've got this long fetch southwesterly pumping up from the uh, Azores. So uh, there's the Azores just there. And uh, we're pumping up the southwesterlies, pumping up the bar there from the Azores. So Tuesday through to Wednesday could well be exceptionally mild. I would have thought records could fall actually overnight Tuesday to Wednesday. We might set a new uh, January minimum temperature, high minimum temperature record Tuesday night into Wednesday and Wednesday will start off an exceptionally mild note eventually we'll start to push out uh, the mildest of that air away as winds sort of swing a little bit more into the west and temperatures start to lower a little bit wet and windy for Thursday next week low pressure uh, in off the Atlantic and then into Friday when again those southwesterlies uh, are continuing that's up to Saturday, the 11th of January. So low pressure continues to be out to the northwest. High pressure over to our east. Should be mostly dry for England and Wales there. Um, and probably quite spring-like. Into more extended range up to day 10. Uh, a bit of a battle starting to take place. Low pressure is uh, desperately still trying to come in off the Atlantic. But high pressure is sent across central and eastern parts of Europe. Its actual centre is over Poland, but it is close enough to us to be kind of warding off those weather fronts and areas of low pressure as well. It should still be generally quite mild up to this point, but turning a little bit drier, especially for southern and eastern parts of the country. More extended range of this GFS run, eventually we start to get a strengthening of the high pressure to our east, and we have a go at getting it towards Scandinavia. 
So by the 17th of January, uh, we've got high pressure beginning to ridge up towards Scandinavia, warding off these areas of low pressure. We're trying to go into something of uh, a colder pattern, and that's how we look as the end of the GFS run. We have got a Scandinavian high at 1,035 millibars. Low pressure continues to be chugging away out in the Atlantic, though, and it's inconclusive which way that will go. Obviously, there is a possibility we might see the Scandinavian high taking over and dragging in a cold east wind. There is plenty of cold air on the back side of that high pressure. You'll notice if we have a look at the upper air temperatures, there's plenty of cold air lurking to our east and northeast. Uh, so if we got into the east, then obviously it would drag in cold air from the east. But with these areas of low pressure out in the Atlantic, it's equally possible that the ridge would just collapse to the Black Sea and we'd maintain the west uh, southwesterly. So... At that point, it's inconclusive as to which way it's going to go. But definitely the GFS 6 o'clock run anyway is in its extended range is trying to get a little bit of ridging going across Scandinavia. Uh, which is something we have seen within the ECM ensembles, of course. We've been looking at those over the past few days. So more about that in a moment. Uh, GM looks like this. So for Monday, we're looking at mild with wet and windy weather in the north and west. And then through the middle part of next week, turns exceptionally mild Tuesday into Wednesday. It will be windy, though. So uh, really tight packed isobars. So uh, very mild, but also risk of gale force winds. And a cold front will probably push across at some point around the middle part of the week and bring some rain and then start to lower the temperature. Into the end of the week, low pressure continues to bring quite unsettled conditions then. And then after that, as we run up towards day 10, high pressure begins to take over. This is a, quite a cool ridge. So uh, we're on Saturday the 11th of January. Low pressure clearing away to the east. The ridge building in from the west. Winds turning into the northwest. That will lower the temperature within that ridge of high pressure. So this is going towards a frost and fog type pattern by day 10. It's Monday the 13th of January. The high pressure is centred over Germany and the low countries and as I say under that high pressure it has turned quite chilly so that would deliver frost and fog as we move up towards day 10 and then the ECMWF looks like that so very mild west south westerly is for Monday and it gets milder from Tuesday into Wednesday exceptionally mild night is possible possibly record breakingly mild Tuesday night into Wednesday Wednesday will probably start off really mild and then see a band of rain push across the country and the temperature begins to uh, lower and then as we move towards the end of next week well it stays quite showery especially for northern and western parts of the country and running up towards day 10 similar to what the gfs six o'clock run is showing uh, actually up to day 10 so high pressure increasingly builds across central parts of europe low pressure is out to our west winds are still from a south southwest direction so it's still mild just starts to turn rather drier especially on the eastern side of the country rain particularly out in the west of those areas of low pressure. Of course, where things would go beyond that, we'd have to wait and see. Let's have a look at the options from the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which is the 13th of January uh, from the Icelandic Met Office. So we have 14 members of the ECM ensembles, including the ECM control run that has high pressure sitting just to our east. Low pressure is, uh, let's change the colour, low pressure is out to the west of the Atlantic. So a little bit, uh, a little bit of a drier option, especially in eastern parts of the country, and probably quite mild winds should be coming in from the south. Eleven members of the ECM ensembles are a little bit strong with that high pressure, having a little bit closer to us. Low pressure is slightly further away in the middle of the Atlantic, so that again quite dry and potentially just a little bit colder. See the difference. So on this option, the four team that we've got here, the wind will be kind of like south to south westerly really or the origins of the air whereas with this one uh these 11 here the wind is just wind direction just ever so slightly different sort of south southeasterly it's a very very slight and sort of difference in the summer it wouldn't really make much difference either way it would be a very warm to hot scenario on either option in the summer but in winter a south southwesterly to a south southeast is quite a significant uh difference really although it's a slight difference it will cause quite a significant difference to the feel of weather i think those 11 will probably be quite a bit colder and generally more frosty 
I've got 10 members of the ESM Ensembles here, including the ECM operational run. That's a run we've just been looking at, but have below pressure uh, closer to us. Uh, high pressure is a little bit weaker to the east. That one is slightly more south, especially for the north and west and mild. Eight down here has had the high pressure centered sort of over Denmark. Uh, so again, more of a southeasterly with bows. That again, quite dry, uh, but um, a rather colder chance of frost and fog. Four had the high pressure sort of over southern Scandinavia. So Denmark, possibly up to the south of Norway and Sweden. A little bit more of an easy. That's probably the coldest option. Winds are sort of from the east with that. Uh, definitely colder for frost and fog. And then four have low pressure racing in off the Atlantic. That's the most unsettled option, of course. But only four of those, dear man. If that came off, it would be wet, windy, and quite mild. So the placement of this ridge, as we get to day 10, exactly where it's sitting, is going to be quite critical as we're moving up to the middle part of the month. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got within the ECM Ensembles. This is taking us to the 18th of January. We have 16 members of the ECM Ensembles that take this high pressure further north and really set it up as like a Scandinavian high type feature, although it is a little bit south of a typical Scandinavian high. But nevertheless, it will be bringing in an easterly flow that. So actually, that will be quite cold, actually. Uh, and mainly dry frost and fog would be an issue if it's dragging in a cold enough easterly, then you wouldn't rule out the chance of wintry or even snow showers, uh, wintry showers or snow showers on the east coast. But uh, I suspect the east wouldn't be overly cold as for a true cold beach from the east type. EC, you have to have a high pressure a little bit further north, centred across central and northern parts of Scandinavia. Nevertheless, it would be quite cold though, that with frost and fog at the very least. 13 have high pressure. Again, somewhere around Norway, the south of Norway, uh, bringing in like a southeasterly, so that's going to be mainly dry and potentially a little bit on the cold and frosty side. 13 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure continue to sit to our east. Low pressure is closer to us in the Atlantic to the west. That's a more unsettled option. Uh, and milder, obviously, as well as the wind is sort of south southwesterly. And the thing with that is, with such high pressure to the east, as the weather fronts with that low pressure coming off the Atlantic, they would kind of uh, slow down and they would probably start to stall across the country as they're not able to take their usual um, track from uh, west to east. So as those fronts slow down, that could turn into a very wet scenario, of course. And then there's nine members of the ECM Ensembles, including the control run, but are just very unsettled with low pressure out to the west and bringing the most west southwest winds. It's inconclusive where this is going through the middle and second half of uh, of January, we may have a go at setting up a Scandinavian high, but how successful it is with such an intensely strong Atlantic and polar vortex, how successful any attempt of building a Scandinavian high is, I'm a bit dubious, and chances are we may get a ridge trying to get going over Scandinavia, but it will be sort of killed off quite quickly by the polar vortex and by the Atlantic, but we shall see. Uh, finally, this is the CFSV2 700 millibar height anomaly for February. Uh, so on the face of it, we just keep the unsettled weather going. Low pressure is dominating here in off the Atlantic. Lots of below average heights through the North Atlantic into the UK and the northwest of Europe. Looks very unsettled indeed. Uh, that um, really deep area of low pressure to say the least. Bringing in further west southwesterlies, so temperature anomalies are milder than average. Not all that big a deviation, actually, for the UK, uh, but many northern parts of Europe having, having an exceptionally uh, mild month, if that is uh, right. A bit colder over America than we've had for a little while, and parts of Canada. And, of course, with low pressure driving the pattern through February, it's another wetter than average month being forecast here by the CFSV2. Not a strong signal, but definitely uh, it's going for uh, a wetter and milder 
than average February, uh, which would, of course, bring a very, very uh, disappointing winter for cold and snow lovers to a very disappointing close because February is the last month of beach Joshua winter. Although, as we always say, that's only the way that we divvy up the statistics. The weather itself does not adhere to those strict criteria of spring, summer, autumn, winter. And so you can get very substantially colder uh, cold weather and snowy weather well on into the spring. March, even April, can sometimes deliver pretty cold and wintry weather. And it wouldn't be the first time if it did go cold into the spring. It wouldn't be the first time that that's happened after a mild winter. Very often when you don't want the northerlies and the easterlies in April, when you want to get on with the spring, you have throwbacks to winter. That's just the way that uh, the weather system seems to work a lot of the time. Anyway, I'm ahead of myself. We'll come back to the next week to 10 days. And it looks like we're going to continue with these mild west south westies into the early part of next week. Could become an exceptionally mild for a time around Tuesday to Wednesday before the temperature then lowers back something a little bit more sensible. Uh, after that, through the second week of the month and up to the middle part of January, I think it's going to be a case of watching what's happening with high pressure to our east. Will the high pressure stick around the Alps, sort of southern Germany, if it's in that position? It will continue to be very mild up to the middle of the month. Will the high pressure stick around Denmark? In that case, it probably turns dry and frosty. Outside chance of high pressure might try and get itself up to Scandinavia, but if it does, will it be able to stay there and get wind into the east before the Atlantic just rolls in and uh, pushes it down to the Black Sea? Have to wait and see, and all will be revealed, of course, in the days ahead. Right, I did say I'd tell you uh, what's coming up over weekend. So tomorrow, the first video up tomorrow will be the doubt of this January uh, month head forecast. We'll have a week head forecast coming up for you tomorrow as well. Also, week 10 will be the update uh, on Sunday. We're going to have the first update for spring. So we have put the long range stuff on the back burner through December after the uh, very prolonged season of winter updates that we did through the autumn. But uh, long range um, updates start again this weekend. So on Sunday, have the first analogs update for the spring. Uh, we will also have uh, Gazovi's Sunday Roundup. That's coming back on Sunday too. That's your eclectic Sunday uh, look at this uh, map. And we may do an Ensembles Watch on Sunday evening. I know I've got you waiting for Ensembles Watch, so we may do that for you on Sunday evening. So it's all cranking back up again at uh, Gazza Vids this weekend. Uh, we're into the new year and we're beginning to get the updates going once again after having a quieter December. Hope you keep checking back to all the updates and enjoying them. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.